I would like to announce a new community for the podcast and how can you support this podcast with Patreon. Now we have a community at Patreon, patreon.com or Jessica You Podcast. We have tiers to provide you with many different ways to help the podcast and receive some perks and benefits. Also, you can start just with a tier that costs literally the price of a coffee. It would help a lot of the cost of the podcast, but also to have exclusive content, get-togethers, and all kinds of perks in the future. We have already set up many tiers that you absolutely will enjoy. I would like you to check, and I can't wait to see you there. Again, patreon.com forward slash or just podcast. I'll see you there. Hey you, we are here with episode 31. I can't wait for you to hear uh, Bocani. She's an artist that lives in London, the UK. And it was a very interesting talk because she has talked about so many new techniques that are to come and about technology and art. And I want to read a little bit of her bio. Her techniques involves urgent gesture movements, exploring and responding to colors as they interact on the canvas. She believes in integrity, freedom, and honors of abstract painting. She has developed a method over several years of creating rational patterns that lead to the viewers across the painting and reminiscence of the dancing African printed cloths of her childhood. We also talked about women art and as a black artist, how is, you know, that difference from the already hurdles we have as artists and about galleries and the difficulty that black artists have entering uh, the gallery space. It was so nice to talk to her. You enjoy a lot this conversation with Bukani. Let's get started. Welcome to the Artistically You podcast, where mixed media art is a place for all. Here, we are going to talk about art as a mindful practice, connect with our creativity, and embrace curiosity. This is your host, mixed media artist, Jana Oliveira. All right, oh. Bocconi, so <laughs> nice to have you here, finally, right? Finally. Thank you. I'm delighted to speak to you. Really happy to speak to you today. I was Thank looking forward for this conversation today, and I so appreciate you coming to the podcast and talk a little bit about your art. And if you guys are listening to this you can go to youtube and i'm gonna show her art as well so if you just want to go there later and just take a peek of her art but we're gonna also share her instagram and everything that you can take a peek on her website and all the beautiful art that she has which i'm oh, very intrigued so to talk about <laughs> thanks so much but bocani first tell people where are you talking mm. to me from I'm dialing in today from London. I live in East London, so that scene is really the creative part of London. So a lot of people uh, working in technology <laughs> and in the arts um, tend to live in this area. So it's, I'm it's home. A, it's a very good area for artists, right? <laughs> it's great. It's super. Even during lockdown, you know, I could mm. walk around, you know, when I went to buy food, all the street art in my area was mm -hmm. always changing. So you know, even in this time when we couldn't go to galleries, mm -hmm. I still felt like I had access to real live art all around mm -hmm. me. Um, so that was really cool. So I will have a question about that. But before that, tell people <laughs> what kind of artist you are. We're going to show a little bit of your art, but just tell them. Absolutely. So I'm a multidisciplinary artist. So I use mostly paintings, uh, acrylic paintings, and I make abstract works with them. Um, I also have a practice where I'm developing a, a, a technique of using clay as the under basis mm -hmm. of my painting and then painting on top of that. Um, and I can share a bit more about that. Yes. And I know you love your multimedia. So yes. um, my other like side to the practice is these mirrored um, paintings that I'm using stained glass paint mm -hmm. on a mirror. And, mm -hmm. and that's really changing how we think about abstract paint mm -hmm. but also i wanted to think about light and how to use light within a painting mm. um and reflection and how to bring the viewer into an artwork so those are my painting practices and i've just finished uh, a master's in computational art so using code and technology to make installations or 
video games and <laughs> oh my goodness it's kind of like using art in this digital platforms is that more like m making art with technology so an oh, algorithm to make yes. a painting that's self-changing so VR, I would right it. or maybe vr exactly yeah 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 so mm -hmm. um you can make it for vr or you can make it for your phone so you have a painting on oh. your phone that is constantly moving and changing so what i develop i might not know what it will look like in five years right and it's so mm -hmm. amazing so they have a master's now about that yeah yeah isn't yeah. that amazing so, <laughs> and it's been going for like 10 years so the oh master's program has been going for 10 years and but galleries aren't yet showing it for many reasons and we can talk mm -hmm. about that as well yeah because it's Is it's it? a new world it's a new yeah. way of making art but we spend so much time in technology that for me it felt important to understand uh -huh. technology today it's like mm -hmm. being monet and not using painting from a tube because that technology yeah. was developed at that time you know so exactly. of course it changes how yeah. you make art and what art we end up seeing so just a tangent here mm. if i'm totally wrong just correct me yeah, is that yeah. something related to the rise now of nft it's different um oh. because nfts are usually like digital collage right. as far as i've seen mm -hmm. um whereas this is artwork where like it will be a painting or the equivalent of like graphics moving or light changing mm. based on an algorithm and so more wow. than it's even more computational i would say argue mm -hmm. than an nft an nft is almost like a receipt or a contract to say right. this artwork is yes. this yours file. yeah you know mm -hmm. and it's yours mm -hmm. um whereas yeah these works are made using technology to be viewed within a context of technology so are you starting to work on something like that? I don't know. It feels too soon. Um, I literally really? had my degree show this summer and uh -huh. um, in September. And I just, I, I think, think you could start playing with it and yes, absolutely. getting people I interested mean, in that. It's, it seems somewhere. fascinating. It was. I mean, for my degree show, I made like this robot that had like a camera in it and you could drive it around. And I made it like with a wire, um, like a, a wire car, like you get in toy cars that kids make in Zimbabwe and I don't know, maybe in Brazil as well, like poorer kids who can't afford like toy cars, they make yeah. their own toy cars. Yes. So I put a, a robot in that and wow. I put a neon shell. So I'll send you the, the photo of that. Yeah, as well. I can put on the blog post of this uh, episode for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow, it's yeah. just fascinating stuff. I'm just... <laughs> you know, it's isn't that amazing? I know, I know people like to talk bad about technology and the mm. internet and all that, but I see so many good things about. It. I mean, we could not talk yeah. if it was not for that, right? Right, right. I mean, how could I find you without an Instagram? Instagram has the good yeah. sides. Yeah, we know it does. they do things we don't like, but yes, we can connect. We can connect. Yeah. I mean, and part of the reason I made that artwork is because I wanted uh, to talk about the conflicts of. Mm -hmm technology the fact that it can be fun and playful and seductive but also for it to be you know um to challenge some of the things that we see in the world and to better understand them so that it's not like a mystery and exactly. that's something i really like to do with work i like people to see it and go what is that how does mm -hmm. that work and to start from that curiosity because i think mm -hmm. that's much it opens up much more interesting conversations. Mm -hmm. And just as we introduce it here, people can yeah. go to your website and see all your yeah. artwork or portfolios. And by the way, when you were talking about clay, we're going to talk more about that. Definitely. But <laughs> I was like, what? Clay? <laughs> I was like, I mean, so people, uh, yeah. her website, if you are listening to this, it's art by Bocani, B-O-K-A-N-I and why.com and she has you can see all her portfolio there and everything so but definitely i'm gonna be putting this on the blog post as well all the pictures so you can see but i would definitely uh go to her website so just going back a little bit to the uh how long have you been as you are a full artist now right so how long have you been doing this 
Yeah, so I work uh, three days a week for a climate charity. And、Ooh. as we talk, I'm sure you'll see where that comes in. <laughs> so that I do that three days a week. And,、um, but I've been painting for about、uh, 12 years now. And I started because I was working in this really intense job. So as a child, like I. I was very lucky in that most things I understood at school.、Mm-hmm. You know, I really loved school. I have a very curious mind. I liked maths. I liked English. I liked poetry. You know, I liked sciences. And all this comes into my artwork. And I felt really like、yeah. art is the only thing where I, I can bring all of that. We you know, can see into, that.、Mm-hmm. Like history and like my interest in, in politics, like all of that can be brought to art.、Mm-hmm. But I was working. You know, I'd gone to school,、uh, high school here in the UK,、uh, then gone on to university or college,、um, and ended up in this banking internship. So we took a year、mm-hmm. out to go and work in an investment bank. So very high pressure. Yeah.、Um, you know, and I'm ambitious. So I'd just gone for <laughs> like, what's the best job I can get? You know?、Yeah. Um, and I really worked hard. But I was so unhappy there, you know,、mm. and I felt a real sort of internal conflict about it because、mm-hmm. this was a job that, like, someone with my background, so I'm adopted by my aunt,、uh, my、mm-hmm. parents passed when I was a child. And, you know, she's a single mom, she's a nurse, so she's worked very hard to bring my sister and me up. Yeah. And she didn't want us to have to work the way that she's been working all her、yeah. life. So, the conflict I felt was like this you know, am I ungrateful because I've been given this、mm. job that like everybody would want? I'm earning more than my parent at、mm-hmm. 19 years old, you know?、Right. Um, but I'm so unhappy and I didn't know how to deal with that.、Mm. Um, and a colleague at work, and at this point, by the way, we hadn't as a child gone to art galleries or any of that. So, I was, you know, 19 and they're like, you know,、yeah. why don't you go to an art gallery? And I was like, what? Okay,、yeah. fine. I grew,、um, I, grew up, I grew up also very poor, and I never, I never even knew what this was about. This was such a right, far so concept us. for us, yeah. right? Yeah. Such、exactly. a far concept for me. I mean, my、exactly. father could not even buy meat. I don't eat meat today, but at that time I ate as a child, and it's like, my father could not even buy meat to eat. This, this is it. So, this is how it. can we think about books or art?、Um, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, so, I think you'll really get this conflict that I felt of like, well, now I've got this job. Now I've got, you know, where my d r e a m To help the family, the, right? The dream. Also, you know?、yeah. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, now how do I turn around and say, this is killing me? This is, you know,、mm-hmm. a job that is so narrow in focus because it was so repetitive、mm-hmm. and it wasn't making society rich. It was making like a few people. Yep. You know? It's true it today. Be, still true today. And this was like 2008. I was in、yep. um, during the banking crisis, right?、Mm-hmm. And so I'm watching all this finance world and I'm like, this is not for me.、Mm-hmm. And a friend recommends I go to the gallery. And then a couple of weeks later, they come up with like a painting course for young professionals.、Mm-hmm. And as a way of really building re- resilience and as a way of dealing with stress in a more positive way than like alcohol and drugs, right? So, this was a way I could just let go.、Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I started with abstract painting because I didn't think I could draw. It's different, I can,、mm-hmm. but I didn't know that at the time. And when we moved to the UK, I went to school and I was behind on, you know, a few subjects. So, I never.、Mm-hmm. Um, Had art lessons at school. Instead, I did like all mass physics, et cetera, to catch up. But I, I used to be a cleaner at school because, we, like, like I said, you know, I didn't have very much money. So my part time job is after school, I would clean、mm-hmm. and I would clean the art room. So I'd have these conversations with the art、oh、teacher, you know, because she, she was really talented. And what she got out of the students was incredible. So this was like really my first exposure is like one <laughs> cleaning.、Wow. This, you know, I, I, you know and, and I'm lucky I went to a great school because I could be the cleaner after school, but I wasn't bullied, you know, like、mm-hmm. people, I still had like respect from my colleagues and from、That's、my、great. teachers. 
you know, um, and people were very open and very welcoming. Um, but I didn't think this is a career that's an option for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, did you, did you bought some things and start playing? Like, or only, did you watch when I did class that, or did you, when I was, yeah. So when I was on that internship, when ah, I was in okay, banking, okay. that's the first time okay. that I bought some things and started playing. And even then I used to do it for myself. Mm -hmm. So I would make paintings just so that every day there's something that is beautiful that I have made mm -hmm. because I felt like all that had changed in my everyday in that year was a, a, an Excel spreadsheet. And I was like, yeah. I can't live like that <laughs> you know yeah. like i've changed one spreadsheet at work on a computer like that's the only way you know that bakani was mm -hmm. here today and um, but it's so amazing that sometimes i believe that people feel that urge and that call mm. right uh but they think okay if i cannot be full-time i cannot do it yeah and yeah. you have another job that i think also is a very uh, it, it gives you that, you know, good Hopefully. thing to work with because yeah. I yeah. think that must be amazing to be able to help and to work with yeah. climate change. Yeah. And uh, I for sure would love to to work on something like that. So, yeah. but then you can work on your art and grow your business art. For, you don't need to give up things and you don't need to be stressed. Because then yeah. you bring to art another stress. I have to pay. We have to right. pay bills, so right? True. I have to so pay true. my rent. I have to do. Uh, yeah. No, you can look for another thing that gives you pleasure and yes. work on your art. Because yeah. we know it's hard. It is. So, it is. And uh, that's amazing that you, I think your story shows that, okay, we don't need to give up everything and be yeah. tortured and pressure. Because then what's going to happen is they're going to bring to you that same stress that you had on your older job, yeah. right? Exactly. So, but your art, um, let me show a piece here. Mm -hmm. Let me see. And yeah. it's just so vibrant. And if you are listening to this, I'm showing a very abstract pen. It has tones of deep blue, light blue, yellows and oranges, some deep red. I know it seems, it seems that I like what all these colors, but they go so well. It's so unique. How how did you start to flourish that style? Is that do you use brushes or it seems a little bit of a mixture of fluid paint? Um, I don't know. Tell us how, okay. how it okay. came about. I'll, you know, I, so this is part of what I love about my practice is that it brings people into it and they go, "What? How?" You know, it's very unique because it's so detailed. Like some of the, the gestures um, move and mix color. So it is, you're right, it's a mixture of, of flow, fluid painting and pore painting. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I like that because, um, like I say, when I first started painting, I wanted to do something where I could release and I wasn't so in control of everything. Mm. So I like the pouring of the paint and the most control I have is in the color choice and palette. Right. But even then, I like to mix the paint on the canvas. So I'm not like... Mm deciding make mixing colors before I, I i do have to water them down i use acrylics and i do have to water them down to get that viscosity to yeah. get that liquidness in them but do you use I, the heavy pad and then you you dilute it or do you work yeah. with flow acrylics yeah, yeah i use the heavy ones and then i dilute a little bit yeah because um, i sometimes i think the flow acrylics i mean they are great but sometimes they are yeah. too liquid you know right. what I mean? You cannot control. Exactly. And I think if you take the heavy body and then you can control how much, exactly. you know, you want them to go fluid. Because sometimes exactly. I think the the flow acrylic is and the high flow is just basically water kind of consistency. <laughs> so it's just like you can't control yeah, no, exactly. anything. It's exactly. almost like transparent. Yeah. So but, I wanted I wanted to have a little bit of um, so this. Uh, is interesting I'll, and I'll come back to that because that's painted on a plastic like uh, window pane um, oh. and again this I've mixed way more viscosity and I've let the paint run a lot more than I normally would yeah so uh, I'm showing here the... just so people that are listening I'm showing oh, yeah. here one that is um, it doesn't have the strokes like the previous one but it's mm. more almost like a C kind of effect 
and it has again uh, reds, deep reds, pinks, and blues and black. Um, it's just beautiful. It's breathtaking. So I use balloons to then structure and move the paint. I used to use palette knives mm -hmm. um, because, again, I felt really intimidated by like brushes <laughs> and like oils. And, it's funny. And, Some and, people have trouble with brushes. Yeah, I know others that ju they just use or cards or yeah. uh, knives or, exactly. you know, uh, use my fingers I used to use my hands initially to make the work because yeah. what I like doing is like sculpting I hope painting. you're using gloves I wasn't I know <laughs> it's bad no. I know it's bad <laughs> even when I make the clay paintings I now use gloves because that's it sticks to your hands and dries so, you know so in UK do you use golden what brand is I don't know if golden there is expensive um, it is <laughs> It is. I use that. Well, it's expensive time. here, but it's made here. So I was wondering if there, do you have access or it's too expensive? We do, no, we do have access to it. Um, and it depends on the, the work that I'm trying to make. So I use System 3 just because I found it really easy and like accessible to work with. Often I work on paper because I find um, the porousness of the canvas, mm -hmm. even just the little grooves, because the it really matters how paint moves on the surface. Mm -hmm. I find that like even the little grooves of canvas can sometimes be yeah. a challenge. Um, Do you use so wood as well? Have you ever painted on wood panels? I have, I have actually one of my earliest I works, love wood um, panels. My friends have it um, and it's, it's, it's a four seasons um, mm -hmm. and each season is um is on a, on a panel of wood and um, that I, I reclaimed and recycled so how did you start it to see okay i started to say style because i see a very distinctive mm. style and when mm -hmm. i say style i'm not just saying about the way the paint looks but your colors mm. Mm. i think you have a very distinct palette that i can expect mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. was that something that came fluid with you or do you thought about okay I'm going to work m mostly with this palette. I'm attracted to this mm -hmm. palette and I'm just going to do mm -hmm. subtle variations of it. How, how did mm -hmm. that came up? So it's a really interesting question because when I first started, um, I really never used like reds or yellows. I started mm -hmm. just with blue and white. And I used people to are afraid of reds. Some people are oh afraid of gosh. reds. You know, it took me a really long time to... Mm -hmm introduce red like warmer colors so really i was painting with blue and white and like that was yeah. it and and it was very very minimalist in that mm -hmm. well <laughs> I, my work is very maximalist because of pattern yeah and movement right but um that was one discipline and I found that as actually during lockdown was the biggest time that mm. i wanted a contrast to the sort of fear and I wanted to work in a from a different place mm -hmm. so I was like have courage like life and the world oh, yeah. is unpredictable yeah. so really have courage and and start to push so that was mm -hmm. really the first time that I began to really use these more vibrant um tones in the work mm -hmm. and I think um my use of the like balloons to get this texture to mm -hmm. um that again was maybe tw late 2018 2019 mm -hmm. i started to find oh this is this is my like signature like this is my language um something clicked about, right something clicked it just it clicked but after like years <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, had, yeah. it work takes it and, takes time um but it, it it really clicked and i'm lucky i have friends who are very supportive of the work um, exactly. And so like once you start to get these like movements and I like mm -hmm. dancing around like the canvas. Yeah, that's areas. what I see. I'm showing here another piece. This is one of my favorites. I love I, I've seen this kind of movement in your pieces. I mean, you know, I am a more of a botanical painter. So yes, I see yes, flowers. Yes, I don't know. Yes. Maybe people see other things. Yeah, but so when you have this you. kind of shapes and I'm showing here, she has some big shapes. The background is kind of a dark blue and has some, I would say, red-orange. Um, mm -hmm. But then again, 
you kind of take the complementary colors and work with that and it's just it's just exquisite i, I just don't have words i'm sorry oh, but so, it's <laughs> so kind Thank so you. this i've seen this shape is very like i don't know it's it's very you in your art so mm -hmm. is that you move with the palette knife is that how you do it no i move with the balloons you know like um oh wow um because they don't um, the way the paint sticks to a balloon because of the, the rubber is very different from how it sticks to a knife. And you can't, I couldn't, I tried, I tried. I tried to get this this curve, this like organicness, like from a knife or from a brush, and I couldn't do it. So I had how to find How did you have that idea to work with balloons? Oh, I definitely researched. I was looking different painting <laughs> techniques on Instagram. I was looking I on YouTube. I never heard about this. I, you know, and I was like, okay, pouring is really instinctive. Mm -hmm. Color palette, for me, that's something that comes naturally. Mm -hmm. But the gesture, like the shapes yes. that I want to create mm -hmm. are like, I'm stuck. And so exactly. So this is really, again, when I want to create these like, like feathery, floral. Yes, that's like the word, fish, feathery. You know, there's like these there's always these movements there's like mm -hmm. movement in nature and it really i think i made one or two paintings very small and i was like this is what i want to do <laughs> this is what i want to say do you um, so for people that are not on video i'm showing here another piece that yes exactly has the same to me to me you know everybody looks at an art and says something different this flower feathery kind of shapes um very unique and i love that in this piece you have some hints of two but again i see over and over again that deep blue mm -hmm. with some black i mm -hmm. think that gives your pieces a unique kind of background because mm -hmm. you're kind of helping the other colors to emerge, right? Because when yeah. you're surrounding them by this deep color, then you have, again, this red orange color. And it's just amazing. Do you have prints of your art or you just sell the original work? Yeah, so I do prints as well. Um, and more recently, I've started doing um, prints. And the way that I do prints, I don't take a whole painting. I will focus on a small part of the painting mm -hmm. and I'll crop it. Kind of like, I think of it as a gardener will go into the garden and they're not yeah, taking yeah. the whole garden, putting it in a vase, right? Like they'll take a few flowers and highlight that. And then that's what I will show as a print. Um, I and I know it's not what everybody does. It's how I choose to work. In I, part, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you live with one of my paintings, you always come back and each part will feel different or will look different. And there's right. always the way that light falls on it might highlight different parts and that's what i, I kind of want to express yeah, i said print. that that one was my favorite but now i'm like in love with this one <laughs> i can't stop it so tell us a little bit about this photo and you can go to her instagram sure. again uh at bokani b-o-k-a-n-i and and you got an outdoor with your yeah. art what yeah. was that about? Because, you know, I'm not in London, so I don't know if that was something that they did for artists. How did you get to have yeah. an outdoor there so, on the streets um, of London? The same way that you got in touch with me, I DM'd a guy. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Just, I know. So I saw this project was being done called Black Art Outdoors. Uh, mm. Black Outdoor Art, sorry. Um, and I just, I saw one of them in my neighborhood in East London, Mm -hmm. And it was a, an artist that I like. I haven't met her yet, but um, it had a little hashtag. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's so cool. And I had been making these drawings and I'd made these like graphic designs. Um, and I didn't really like think, oh, the next part of my practice is to go on a billboard. But mm -hmm. I'd been thinking a lot about scale and how to bring my work to a bigger scale and mm. what that might feel like. And would I need to work differently? And how do I, you know, in order to like solve that problem, I had to see it. Mm -hmm. So I literally sent a DM to the curator who was picking these designs out. Amazing. And I sent him three designs 
And he was like, oh my God, I love these. We're going to print them next week. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Amazing. And literally, so what happens you is... You know, people, have... people are afraid to just ask, right? People are so afraid to ask. Because what he could say, oh, not now or maybe later. Right. Or even if he... He's not going to change anything, right? <laughs> if he ignores it, I'm still alive. Like, it's not going to kill me, you know? And yeah. so many other times, I think... I've then sent his details to other artists and there's a fear of what if I fail? You know, that's the other fear, which I don't listen to that a lot <laughs> because I'm learning all the time and I allow myself to be learning all the time. And I, you have to be humble where possible and kind I of guess, say, well, you can't know it all. That is not just great for exposure, but like you can put in a resume there, right? Wow. I have oh, like sure. uh, or in the streets of London. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And from there, you can, you know, pitch to other kinds of venues that want to maybe, you know, I don't know, restaurants, places that want a whole art on the wall. Because now this For is sure. very, I don't know over there, but it's very in here. Um, yeah. Restaurants and places asking artists to paint and do murals or things like that in yeah. stores. Yeah. So a big part of it, like for me, was really speaking to the response to racial injustice. And I wanted to have work that isn't like, isn't propaganda, but still tells yep. you what I think, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. the thing with the paintings, I felt like I could express myself and my inner journey and I could express the beauty of all of that and the richness of all of that. But, and also realize that, well, maybe other people when they see it will realize that, oh, actually, Everyone has this capacity for abundance yes. within them. Yes. And I really wanted people to get that. And so I, when I made these, I mean, the first billboards that went up um, were like really very direct. You know, they were like about protecting black women, paying them, promoting them and yes. like saying, well, there's a problem here and we need to address it and we need mm -hmm. to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my background, I studied politics with economics, so I want to talk mm. about the money. <laughs> you know? So I really wanted to bring all these into the into the work. And then I just made some more and brought my paintings into it. And that mm. was the first time. And I was just like, oh, my God, I don't know if that will work, you know, um, because I make paintings at a very intimate, like person scale, like mm -hmm. I'm very involved in them. So to see them at that scale, I would need assistance. I would need like a whole, you know, team Amazing. to make work yeah. at that scale. Amazing. So it's made me even more ambitious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to do more. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about the part of the difficulties of an artist, especially for women. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just before we go to that, we didn't talk about the clay. Yes. Oh, sorry. Too I'm popular. very, I'm very curious about that. Um, I didn't screenshot any clay picture here, but you mm. can definitely find that at her website. Mm -hmm. So tell us about where that came from. Really um, wanted to have a new language. Um, so for me, painting and art, um, I'm not stuck in one area because I think that's, you know, this is the only way to express yourself. Um, I, I, I see materials as also giving a different feeling so mm -hmm. the paintings are very sensuous they're very yeah they're bold they're very mm -hmm. direct but there's yes. a, a kind of closeness that they invite mm -hmm. um and with clay it has a different gravity there's a, a certain like heaviness that mm -hmm. it holds yeah. that i wanted to and i was looking for a material that allowed for that and so after the passing of george floyd i didn't paint for like a month because I was so shaken, mm -hmm. but I also didn't feel like I could talk about what was happening there with what I was seeing, you know, with, with my paintings. Like, mm -hmm. it didn't feel like the right language. It felt like this was, yeah, it, I, I couldn't bring the, the difficult feelings on anger mm -hmm. that I felt into that. So, um, I can't really remember. I'd started experimenting with clay, but I hadn't really, like, I'd, I'd started to try and make these sculptural paintings, but I hadn't 
they were still using flowers. I was still like trying to speak the same language, mm -hmm. but with flowers. So right. after that, I, I took a month, didn't make anything. And then was in the studio realizing that there were so many ideas that I wanted to tie into one work. I wanted to talk about land rights and clay is a really interesting um, like relationship to land. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to talk about like my Christianity. I'm Catholic. I'm brought up Catholic and that's very important to me, but it's also linked to co a colonial history. Yeah. Um, I For wanted sure. to talk about, you know, like the financial benefits of seeing people one way or another. I wanted to talk about how like a lot of this looked like entertainment for people. And mm -hmm. it wasn't, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't like people saw those who'd been killed as, um, oh, I don't know what to say, um, as human beings anymore. It felt like they saw them more as, oh, Thanks. that's a character, yeah. you know? Um, and so I really wanted to, to change that. Mm -hmm. And so the, the clay paintings really allowed me to put all that. So I made a layer of the clay mm -hmm. and then on top of it, I then started drawing in yeah. and then I drew, I know, saw that you I carved, added, you carved the shapes, right? And faces into it and like mm -hmm. crosses into it. And then I painted on top of that mm. and it's interesting. I'm really going to develop that work some more. I drawn on it and then I painted over and I used a very particular blue, the blue that you're talking about mm -hmm. that I like. I love this ultramarine blue. It's meant so many different things to me throughout um, my work so far. But in this context, I really added like a, a, a tone to it that reminded me of cobalt blue mm. and the way in which this mineral is mined and, you know, the tradition of painting of, of grinding down pigments right. to make the oil, you know, I wanted to have all these things within one work. Um, but some pieces and... that I saw, you left part of the clay in their raw color, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to experiment some more with that mm, to see whether okay. I should cover the whole surface. And, um, yeah, this artist that I, I really love, uh, Deborah Roberts, she's really popular in the US, um, very well collected, very well respected. I saw she was in London and again with the DMs, I, I, <laughs> she was here for Freeze, you know, the art fair, um, really important art fair in, in the UK. All galleries come from all around the world, all artists come from all around the world. And I saw she was in London on Instagram and I was like, hey, um, I'm sure you're really busy, but if you're free, um, please come to my studio. I would love to share my work with you. And she was so kind. You know, she came around and she had some suggestions about the work. And, you know, one really straightforward thing she said a lot of, you know, new artists do is they stop at the border. Mm. And she was like, your work is so expansive, like paint right to the edge, go right mm -hmm. over so that it looks like it never stops. Mm -hmm. And because, and, and I, you know, it sounds so simple and I'm like, oh my God, I hadn't thought of that. And she's like, it give, it just lifts, yeah. you know, Many the work. Many people don't think and, about that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I mean, I paint the edges, but she was like, keep the design going, keep the, 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 the patterns going all across. Mm -hmm. Um, and that made me think really differently about, you know, what I do and what I make. And so I, I really, I really appreciate conversations like this. And I appreciate conversations with her because I think as an artist, of course, there's work that comes from within you, mm -hmm. but it's from exchange. If you're not making it in a vacuum, I listen to podcasts all the time. Yeah. You know, you, you have to share the works eventually. Yes. Anyway. Yes. That's true. But it's such a, a unique concept. And again, uh, everyone, you can go to her website, but I'll put directions. She has uh, a link there just for the clay um, pieces. It's just uh, mm -hmm. very unique. And I think you can, you can for sure expand that to so many things with right. your colors. I think I can't yeah. wait to see what you come yeah. up with. Yeah. So <laughs> as we head out here to the last part, I would like so much mm. to talk with you because when I talk with Sukai, we talked about... Mm this thing of curating art uh, of mm -hmm. black people, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in, it's still today 
you know mm -hmm. uh when we see great women that especially in expressionism art they fought so hard to be in the middle of men right and there were just a few that you can count on one hand uh, that were brave enough to have their work out there. So how do you see uh, today, I mean, I know here in the US things are a little different than in London. So how do you see today mm. the acceptance of black art and the female black art? Because there's mm. a difference. We already have issues of being female artists, right? Uh, because I think that there are things for female artists that are not are statues that are not set to men. I think there is this thing of if a man says, Oh, I'm a painter or I'm an artist, and they're like, Oh, nice. And then you say, and they're like, Oh, it's nice to have a hobby. Right. Right? <laughs> so, not saying yeah. the hobby is a bad thing. No. But hobby is not a bad thing. The way people talk about hobby is what they intend is a bad thing. Because they're agree. talking about hobby as something that is important. Yeah. Right? And I don't think hobby is unimportant at all, but this is the, the way they say to you. So yeah. how is it over there? How it has been for you to expand your art and be out there as a, a black female artist in London? It's a really interesting time because on the one hand, it feels like there's a real um, renaissance happening um, mm -hmm. with especially African artists. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the other side of like, within the UK and actually with as everywhere, this whole idea of blackness is so vast and, and, and it includes so much. So there's like black Caribbean, black African, yeah. black British. So all these um, different expressions, yeah. I feel like are much more visible now. This also happened in the 80s. There was a resurgence of black British artists in the 80s that were collected by the museums, you know, shown a lot. But then those museums bought the work and then put it in the vaults and never showed it again. Mm. So it's very subtle, the ways in which work is just sort of brought into the system and like, oh no, we did our thing. We supported it, we, you know? Um, but then actually seeing like work constantly on show, constantly being reviewed, you know, um, being put in, in historical context, like these things are all really, really important. And so, Part of what I'm more optimistic about now is there's easier ways for us to connect technology mm -hmm. again. Um, sure. So we have to build our own spaces and also share opportunities in ways that might have been more difficult before. Mm -hmm. um, we also have to, I think, um, just find ways of really sustaining our work. So um, finding new and creative ways to support the work. So things like artist pledges or like, you know, um, the artist support pledge, which was really popular here during COVID. I think there are models that we can now take up that support us long-term and not just for a moment to have, you know, a successful, you know, show. The other thing I think is people often want to have specific types of work. So not that, much of my work has illustrations or mm -hmm. drawings of black people. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like people don't want to buy it because they can't be like, oh, I've bought a black artist. Look, there's a black face on this painting. I'm not, you know. And performative things like that, I'm aware of. And um, I can see how that can play out. But you it's see, I don't think it is people question that with a uh, other kind of artists. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I was talking with Sukai, and you guys can see that on the previous what uh, on the previous podcast. Um, is that I think there is this misconcept that black art has to be always political. First of all, mm -hmm. um, and as you said, black art has to be always of drawings of black women or black mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I agree. But black artists are like any other artist. They can paint flowers. They can paint uh, abstract. They can paint whatever they want. But yeah. why I think society keep saying to black artists or Latino artists how you should do your art? Yeah, exactly. Right? It's because I think other questions are raised when 
artists like if i'm talking about climate i'm talking about wealth generation i'm talking about capital i'm talking about economics these are conversations that people don't necessarily want to have you know yeah. and especially not from a black woman so for me those are exactly the conversations that i think are important to be more inclusive and so it's it's the difference between having um sort of superficially open and inclusive practices mm. within museums and galleries to real depth of actually inviting people because you really care about their opinions you really care about their work and also everybody is so rich and complex as human beings as an individual mm -hmm. of course you have a lot of different topics you want to talk about as well as your heritage as well as you know i'm not ashamed of being black i love that i love i'm so thankful for my family i'm so thankful for my culture at the same time i've also grown up in the uk and yeah. i'm really thankful for everything i've had from here yeah you know it's not that one is better than the other at yeah. all but those exist together in me by default mm -hmm. you know um and yes, yeah and I, I, I just i just released an episode um that talks about my name of my business two words yeah despite two words, of I having many people saying to me this is a wrong name it's the yeah. same kind of example you're saying it yeah. is deep in me that i have these two cultures yeah. because soon here in a couple of years i'm gonna have been living here more than i lived in my own country same so it's you have these both things yeah. and it's part of who you are yeah but sure. do you think that after George Floyd event, um, something changed in kind of acceptance of black art or is the same or it was just in the moment? It was, it felt very superficial to me because there were a lot of statements that were put out, mm -hmm. but there's no like financial support. There's mm -hmm. no like space being provided for black artists to show work they want to show or for black yeah. curators to come and show what they want to show. Mm -hmm. So these are like the tangible things compared to PR statements. And for me, yeah. I really look at what are the actual actions? You know, how are you providing fellowships for training curators money to support living while you train? Because in the UK, and I know this is the case in the US because it's so expensive to study. If you want to study to be a curator, you have to ha be able to work for free for many years. Yeah. And who can afford that? Mm -hmm. Certainly not people with my background. Yeah, it's um, it's the same thing in Brazil, like public, public universities yeah. um, are well known for just being for rich people because even though they're public, just rich people can be on the university all day long. Yeah. My husband was the only one poor in his, in his uh, academics because he was lucky enough to get a scholarship yeah and he had you know side jobs but yeah he remembers going to the university MA, I had two jobs yeah he remembers going to university by bus while all his friends had cars and you know <laughs> yeah. so i think when you were talking about the difference of black heritage like you know it's kind of the same what happens here in the u.s with yeah. latin culture like yeah i am not hispanic but mm. i am a latin you know latina mm. but mm. here they kind of put everybody in the hispanic culture one. especially mexico it's like everybody mm. speaks mm. spanish is from mexico when you have the heritage and you have the mm. symbols and you have the colors when mm. it's not i don't it's even speak spanish not. so right. it's um <laughs> It's something that bothers me, yeah. And I know yeah. I talk about this all the time, people. I know. Sorry about that. But no, no, no. It's, it's, I mean, I, a... I don't think we talk about it enough. I mean, things like even artwork from our cultures is in the British because Museum, you feel you're I'm not like... represented, right? You feel yeah. you're not represented for sure. And for sure. what you were talking about also um, in the UK, I think it's, you call multi multi art. How do you call? Oh, multi multidisciplinary. Yeah, but here we call mixed media art. Okay. When okay. George That's Floyd, <laughs> when George Floyd event happened, a bunch of things in the community of mixed media art started to like highlight black mixed media artists on their Instagram or do all. The, there was this kind of thing, and or people saying, "I sorry, I never thought about that, or I didn't realize." And I'm like, just now. 
So I, it I happened it once and yeah. it's been how many years and nothing else? Why? Yeah. It's something to me that it should be happening all the time. We should be highlighting yeah. artists now, yeah. not just black. Now let's highlight other people yes, that absolutely. you maybe didn't know. That, oh, I didn't find yeah. that they existed <laughs> or they needed yeah. help. Oh, who, who guessed that, <laughs> that they yeah. needed help? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and crazy. and that's one of the reasons that I'm so glad you came to the podcast because I I'm trying to find people from other heritages and black people mm. and you know because um, I see a lot of you know podcasts about art and people just bring white artists and, and I'm I also not think bad like... about the host or anything it's just that it's my job as a person that is an immigrant to talk about other cultures and also like other ways of being diverse you know so like mm -hmm. there are artists who are neurodivergent who are disabled in other ways and like and i think it's really important that we recognize yeah. that yeah there and i mean has incredible value too this these things are really deep important because not just mm -hmm. i am a person here speaking with an accent in this country mm -hmm. and despite being an american but i also have a son that is autistic right which yeah. society sees as not able right yeah. because he's seen as disabled yeah right yeah. which i'm not i'm okay because if he needs that label to have services that's fine yeah, but the no, problem is when society also yeah. thinks that he's disabled right so yeah. we have to take these things in account and keep talking about yeah. them because it's sometimes the people oh, you always talk about your well it's my reality <laughs> and and it's also the reality of you know like we we can't only focus on a minority of artists by minority of artists i mean white artists are the minority mm -hmm. of artists there's so many other creators out there but do you doing... think that also mm. let's talk a little bit about the black women right mm. do you think also the black women are they not like you like you go and dm people you go and go for it do you think they feel like uh, I'm a female black artist. I don't know if do you think they feel a little I don't know. Intimidated? I, th I think a little a little I think a little bit, yes. Um I think you're right in that I've been very lucky in that when I have gone out, most of the time I get a response and you know, um I it sounds arrogant, but I also think I've w I work hard. And I work hard at my techniques, at my practice, at the, like the technical side of being an artist, as well as the kind of the business side of like, you know, having we don't to have to be on. ashamed to talk about the work we do. <laughs> I know. It's a lot of work. But for me, I, I get my confidence comes from I know mm -hmm. the work I've done. And mm -hmm. also, weirdly, I used to throw my paintings out. I used to just do them just for like myself. Mm -hmm. And a friend picked it out. Like he, we lived in the same apartment block. He picked it out from the bin and I went to his house for dinner and I was like, what is this painting doing here? Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, this idiot doesn't know something beautiful. And they threw this out. And it, those <laughs> little things, <laughs> oh my God. you know, and he didn't know it was mine. Little things like that make me think, well, somebody else might want to see this. And my yes. work is of service. It's not yes. just a hobby. It's not just vanity. It's not, you know it's because it's a service so yes. i feel good about taking it out but not i heard does. someone say one time i don't remember it's been a long time i never forgot that yeah. like we we should not keep our to offer beauty to the world yeah because it's, somebody it's, it's is gonna gift. see your work and think it's beauty yeah um that's a and nice question here and duty. yeah Last question here that I think we forgot to talk a little bit about is galleries. So in regarding yeah. to what we were talking about, so how do you think galleries are accepting black artists? But That's, also, I think if you don't agree, yeah. also remember when we were talking about all this technology, yeah. I think sometimes even with COVID, I mean, today we have virtual shows and everything. I think galleries were forced yeah. to kind of think twice. And I hope they learned yeah. that lesson with COVID. Yeah. But I think still galleries are very like narrow minded. Yeah. Yeah, so, but what do you think about their acceptance of black artists? I haven't seen it increase and improve yet. Mm. You know, like I said about the statements, but mm -hmm. not the inviting artists to show work and also the sales. I'm not yet seeing that. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I, they just don't want to represent me yet, but we'll see. Mm. I'm, I'm open to seeing that. And that's what I mean about like people 
really backing you and people yes. really, you know, most of my shows, I've been in five shows last month. Were, maybe one was in a gallery. The rest were in like oh, a library, wow. in a co-working space, in, you know, other pop -ups spaces. that happen. Yeah, we yeah. show this, we call this here pop-ups. Yeah. Yeah. So there are more pop-ups. And there's a difference in hmm. how art is seen when it's seen in a gallery and when it's seen in a pop-up. So You know, I, I never... I mean, I'm an emerging artist. I am a new artist. Um, I've been doing art all my life, but you know, as a as a person that sells art, it's I'm relatively yeah. new. But I don't know if I want to work in galleries. I'm still thinking about that because I think yeah. they have very strict views of what art should be, and they want a specific art. And I don't and they think want we you should to be put in this box. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't think we should put labels in art right even I here i live in palm beach there's a lot of our galleries but yes. i don't know when i see they don't been creative enough and doing different oh, things brave. and i've not yeah. seen the ones that i look to have diverse artists i just see white people i never saw a name that looked men, Lat La hispanic way, latino white men <laughs> yeah i've never yeah. in the ones that i looked at the exhibitions that you know online i never saw any artists with the name that reminds yeah. me of myself or you. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And but I think they'll have to change. You yeah. know, the music industry had to change because demand was there. Mm -hmm. And so, and I mean, okay, fine. The behind the scenes of the music industry, you still have, you know, directors and producers are not always, you know, yeah. um, the same as the artists. Mm -hmm. But the music industry had to accept and change. And yeah. that's going to be the case, I think, for art as well. I really have to go. I've got my yes. deliveries waiting outside. Yes. <laughs> but Connie, I, I was going to to end, but it was such a pleasure. I think we could be talking oh, here for hours you. about oh, this. Oh, we could right? talk again. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I would love to have you again and go deeper yes. on this on these issues. But yes, I please. thank you so much. And everybody, again, look at the notes and you can visit her, her at www.artbybocani.com. I'll for sure put in the notes. And as always, you can look later at the notes in my blog. But as I said, I am a mom. It takes time for me to do That's things. Okay. <laughs> but so Bocani, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the space. This is where it begins. Yes. connections thank you so much yes thank you so much for listening to the podcast i appreciate you listening to the podcast all the way here to the end and i would like to thank you so much and to help us spread the word about the podcast you can share on instagram and tag me i would love to share as well and take a screenshot and tell me what you're doing while you're listening to the podcast or leave us a review an Apple podcast. We really appreciate if you could do that. It really helps spread the word about the podcast. I will talk to you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Check episode notes at the number two, worldart.com slash blog. Connect with Jana on Instagram at Jana underscore two worlds. And make sure to receive our artful insights by signing up at bit.ly slash Join Two Worlds Art.